This video will serve as a very brief introduction to some of the key ideas we use in rock mechanics. Now, a lot of these are rooted in mechanics and materials, strength and materials. So if you're familiar with that, then you're really familiar with the foundations of rock mechanics. There are a few little things that I'll talk about that we have to be careful about just because of the nature of rocks specifically. If you've taken courses on things like strength and materials, then you're probably used to dealing with steel or concrete, maybe man-made materials uh, that behave pretty nicely from an engineering standpoint. Rocks, not so much. It's nature. They form however they want, however chaotically they need to. And that creates some difficulties. But let's start with the basics. So of course, you'll recall these two sh terms should be familiar to most people. Sigma is stress and epsilon is strain. Starting with stress, stress is the force per unit area. It's not the same as pressure, which we usually use to describe something uniform, right? Like air pressure or water pressure, where it's acting all around you. A stress is, you can think of it as directed and that it will cause a strain. We'll get into strain in a minute, let's stay focused. Engineering stress, you might hear the term, is force per unit area, but you might give it this little subscript, A naught, which is to say the original cross-sectional area. Because of course, as you load a material, even a rock, it's going to deform. Now, I'll talk about this briefly because it is something that makes rocks unique, is the stress-strain curve for a rock. If you know anything about material science, you'll know that Metals generally have an elastoplastic region on the, oh, let me label this, the stress strain curve, right? That's where it's linearly elastic, we'll say. And then it gets to a point where it starts to what we call strain harden. And then it gets to some point, we call that the ultimate stress or the tensile stress. And then within this region, it starts necking deformation becomes no longer uniform, and then it breaks. Rocks are a bit different. Because rocks are composed of minerals, and minerals have a lot of both ionic and covalent bonds within them, rocks behave a lot more like ceramics. So you'll get a more defined elastoplastic region, and then you'll get a very sometimes imperceptible region where we might say the metal is beginning to yield. So for all practical purposes, we would say that the yield stress of a rock is the same as the ultimate stress or the fracture stress. And that's of course where it breaks, which is something we always gotta be looking out for. That's usually what we don't want in practice. And we're trying to create some sort of underground excavation. We don't want the rocks around us to be breaking down and trapping people or killing people in there. But let's move on to strain. This is epsilon strain, and I think it's good to start with a picture to kind of visualize this. So in rock mechanics, most of the test specimens we work with are these cylinders. And let's say it's in compression. We're applying some load there, some force that is being distributed across this circular cross-sectional area on the base of the cylinder, which of course is going to give us a stress We'll just call that sigma. And then of course you know that over time, oh, that was probably bad, that cylinder is gonna kind of compress. It makes sense, you apply a compressive force, that cylinder is gonna shrink a little bit. And if I kind of draw my little lines here, then we'll have these two little lengths here, right? And let's say that these two lengths, let's say it deformed evenly. So we might call both of these one half delta. For a total compression, that is a change in length of the specimen equal to delta. That's a lowercase delta. Okay, so we have delta, but what does that mean? Well, delta, you know, usually we refer to that as a change, and that would be relative to the original length of the specimen, L naught. Once again, in material science or mechanics materials, you'll frequently refer to that as the gauge length. 
for something like a metal. Rocks, it sounds weird saying that they have a gauge length, so just think of it as the initial un unloaded length of the specimen, right? And then epsilon from there is going to be equal to delta over L naught. So you can think of it as the change in length divided by the original length. And of course, looking at unit analysis, those are both units of length. So here in the US, we're probably going to be using inches. Everyone else, you know, just think of it as centimeters. I don't need to hear your crap about why our system is bad. Inches per inch, that's going to cancel out and give you something that's unitless. So you can really think of strain as a percentage, right? A percent change in the length of the material you're dealing with. And again, we have engineering strain um, to refer to specifically length naught because if you think of it in terms of something that's time dependent, then it gets a lot more hairy in terms of looking at how it changes over time. With engineering stress and strain, you get these pretty clean stress strain curves that we can easily label things on. So those are the foundations. And in future videos, we'll get into things like the Young's modulus and the Poisson's ratio. But these are the very two most basic things you gotta understand when you're going into rock mechanics. And a few things I will note, if you're familiar with other fields that use these things, there are a few important differences with rock mechanics. Notably that compression is positive, tension is negative. In things like civil engineering, because you're mostly dealing with things like steel, which have their tensile strengths, and a lot of times they're in tension when they're in buildings, it's useful to think of tension as positive, and the strain would therefore be expanding, right? So it's positive as well. But in rock mechanics, because we're dealing with in situ rock masses in the earth, those are bearing the weight of some rock above them. So a lot of times they're being compressed. So we say that compression is positive, tension is negative. It seems like a trivial difference, and for the most part it is, right? Humans came up with it. Does it really matter what's positive and negative? No. But it does make doing more circles kind of tricky, and I'll try to make note in the future of that, that little difference and where you kind of got to be careful. Another thing in rock mechanics that makes it tricky to think about, in material science we have slip systems within crystals, Right, if you've got some sort of crystal system here, pretend this is cubic, I guess, then you might be familiar with slip planes. I don't I don't know any off the top of my head. Well, you might have the one 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 plane. You might say, Oh, that could be a could be a slip plane. Right. Well in rock masses there are a whole bunch of those, only instead of on the microscopic scale, they're quite macro. You know, in any given specimen or pretend this isn't just a cylindrical specimen, pretend it's an in situ rock mass, you could have a whole bunch of little discontinuities or joints or fractures, and those can do a whole bunch of things to the behavior, right? They could fill with water and change the amount of stress it can handle. They could be void spaces and the compression actually allows those to close before they start feeling the stress completely. It can do some interesting things to them. And a lot of times what we're looking for when we're designing around these is how is it going to impact the strength of the rock. And a lot of times they are the determining factors in whether or not your rock mass is going to fail or not. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea of what distinguishes the field. In the future we'll get into some of the more, we'll dive deeper into the basics and hopefully be able to get to some of the more rock specific applications, the engineering applications you run into with them specifically.